Thank you, Jesus. Uh, good to be in the house of God tonight. Good to see all of you once again. We're going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 23 tonight. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. 2 Samuel chapter 23 in the word of the Lord. Before you go there, go to Jeremiah 4 and 19. And then we'll go to 2 Samuel 23. Amen. <clears throat> it's a very interesting verse here in Jeremiah. Um, I'll be in a teaching mode sort of at the beginning. We'll see how God leads. But Jeremiah 4 and 19. Here's what Jeremiah says. My bowels, my bowels, his you know, innermost being. My bowels, my bowels. I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace. What that literally means is I cannot find peace. Because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of of the trumpet, the alarm of war. I'm going to read it again. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace or can't, can't find peace because thou hast heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Amen. Amen. Second Samuel 23. Praise the Lord. In verse 14. David was then in a hold. The garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. He said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their life? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zariah, was chief among three. He lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them and had the name among them. Was he not most honorable of the, of the three? Therefore he was their captain, howbeit he attained not unto the first three. Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now. We ask your blessing to be upon the reading of your holy word. We thank you tonight in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. The <clears throat> title of the message tonight is, What Will You Do for Your King? And your King being Jesus, of course. What will you do for your King? Let's back up into 2 Samuel chapter 22. And what we see here is that this is the... Uh, the closing days of David's life. I believe David passed away when he was about 70 years of age. So he's getting at the end of life at this point. Uh, the Bible begins to tell us some things that he was uh, speaking of, beginning with verse 47 of chapter 22. He said, The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock. It speaks of salvation that He's our Savior, that He's the Savior of Israel, that He's the Savior of the church. Amen. So He begins out worshiping God and exalting Him. And exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. Amen. It is God that avengeth me and that bringeth down the people under me. This time, of course, David's talking about the history of his life, how that uh, times when there were enemies and when, when Dave was hated, <clears throat> hated by people, certain people, you know. And so he's praising God for God judging those situations and intervening on his behalf. If we look over in Proverbs 14, 29. <clears throat> of course, in, in the context that he's talking about Saul. 
And Saul, of course, had made choices in his life and King David made choices in his life. There's two kinds of choices that we can make in life. We can be like Saul or we can be like David. And so let's look at some guidelines here in Proverbs 14, 29. Deals with uh, anger. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Proverbs 14, 29. Here's what it says. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly or foolishness. Amen. Read again. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Look at 19. Proverbs 19. Verse 11. It says, the discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. See, there, there are choices that we can make in life. When David was hated, as, I, as the, I said earlier, by people, he didn't give in to anger. He didn't give in to bitterness. What he did, he decided to trust God. He decided to go to God with these things and and rely upon the Lord. And God intervened on his behalf. And it took a lot of strength for David to do that. Amen. And so those are words of wisdom that we can walk by. We can make a choice to do it the other way or we can make a choice like David did. And so the Bible says, it is God that avengeth me, that bringeth down the people under me. And that bringeth me forth from mine enemies. Thou hast also lifted me up on high. Above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. And I will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king. And showeth mercy to his anointed unto David. And to his seed forevermore. You look over here in 2 Samuel 1 and 17. We see the, uh, the end of Saul, or what happened to Saul, 2 Samuel 1, 17. But look at the response of David. Uh, we talked to you this morning about how humble David was. After he became king, he recognized and realized and Remember where God found him as despised, you know. Not uh, even invited to the anointing. And so he stayed humble all of his life. We see in 2 Samuel 1, 17, you know, the man that was trying to kill David, if David had a heart of anger and bitterness, he wouldn't have said these things. In 2 Samuel 1, 17, when Saul and Jonathan dies in the battlefield, The scripture says David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. He has a eulogy for Saul and Jonathan instead of uh, being bitter and angry and celebrating their death. In verse 18 he says, Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold it is written in the book of Jasher. The beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of Ascalon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of, let me back up here, nor fields of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back. The sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. You daughters of Israel, weep over Saul who clothed you in scarlet 
with other delights who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle. O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thy high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen and the weapon of war perished. This was the heart of David. A man, you know, he could have chosen a different way to handle things. He could have celebrated the death of Saul and Jonathan, but he didn't. He, he uh, actually lamented that. And that was the heart of David. You know, that was the kind of man that he was and uh, not given over to anger, etc., etc. Trusting God to handle the situations of life that faced him. Praise the Lord. I want to be like David, hallelujah, in my life. And I, I know that you do as well. Praise God. Amen. He moves on from there and he talks uh, as he gets ready to pass from this world. He begins to talk about some things and some last words that he says. You know, when somebody is going to tell you something that's their final words, you get really close to them and you listen. Because normally the last words of a person are very, very important. And so David began to share his last words. And the Bible tells it it is his last words. He said, now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, the man who was raised up on high and anointed, the anointed of God, of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, amen. When you look at last words in the Bible, they're always prophetic. They always point to the future. They point to last day things. And so when we see David say these things, it's pointing to the last days or something that's going to happen in the end times, especially in relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my tongue. One place in the psalm says, My tongue was the pen of a ready writer. Amen. That means that God put the word on David's mouth and, and David's tongue. And, and then David, uh, when God put that word by inspiration on his tongue, David pronounced that word and then he wrote it down. His tongue became the pen of a ready writer. He heard the word, he said it with his mouth, then he wrote it down. And so he said, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. Remember, these are the final words of David. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake, spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be what? Just. Ruling in the fear of God. He said, I've trusted the anointing of God. And he said, in order to rule in, over lives of men, he said, there must be justice that are there. And then in Isaiah 11, we see some things about anointing. And it was upon the life of David, ultimately upon Jesus Christ. It says in verse 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. It shall make him quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he, he slay the wicked. So that's the sevenfold anointing uh, that comes with the Spirit of God being upon a person's life. So he says, he that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. He goes on and he says, he shall be as the light of the morning. Amen. Amen. That means, you know, he's going to come through dark times. Praise God. All the people of God, you're going to go through dark times. There's no way to avoid it. He talks about the morning. That means now you made it through the dark times and, and the light's shining. And uh, as the light gets brighter and brighter, that means your light's increasing. You know, your life is increasing. And so we know in Israel's history that they went into captivity, the darkness. But following that darkness came this awesome light. But he said, he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds. As the tender grass springing out of the earth 
by clear shining after the rain. He said not only is it going to increase in greatness, but it's also going to be, a, be refreshing, praise the Lord. That's the kind of leadership that God wants. He wants leadership that's anointed. He wants leadership that is just. He wants leadership, uh, as the Bible says, it increases uh, as we go like the light. It increases in greatness and it's a, a leadership that's refreshing. Hallelujah. And that was David in his life. He goes on in verse 5, he said, Although my house be not so with God. Now that, when we read that, it sounds like David is saying, well, it's not like that with me. It's not like that in my house. But that's not what it means. Amen. That's not what it means. He said, it's not my house. Amen. So with God. That's the literal translation. Although my house be not so with God. No, he's literally saying, it's not my house so with God. He said, it is like that with God. Say, with God. With God, with God your house should be increasing in greatness. It should be like lightning or light coming out of darkness. It should be a home that's anointed, a home that is refreshed with the presence of God. And, you're, and so that's the way it is with God. Say, with God. But without God, you don't have these kinds of things. Although my house, and I'm going to say it again, I'm literally read it, it's not my house, so with God. It's a little bit confusing there in the text. Yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered it in all things, and sure, say sure, so the sure mercies of David. For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not grow and and that also is a little bit confusing because what David's saying is that God is going to cause it to grow. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's a life lived uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's beautiful, beautiful passages of Scripture here that David is saying. Hallelujah. Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. For all this, all my desire, although he make it not to grow, he's saying no, he's saying it's making it to grow. And what's interesting is that in verse 5, there is a... Uh, su uh, superfluous or su how would you say it? superfluous H or hay it's just there and it's really there for no reason as far as the wording is concerned this hay is found there and what David is saying is that God makes a way for you and I to be saved he said you know it's like the hay and you would see it if you saw the Hebrew text it's like the hay where all the wicked or in the large portion of the hay. You remember what the hay looks like, right? Okay. There's a little bitty opening at the top, but at the bottom, it's a big wide opening. And that's where the wicked are going to go. They're going to go into destruction. But David is saying, and that's why this hay is there. It seems like it's there for no reason. But God is saying, I made a way for you to get to heaven. I made a way for you to be saved. Amen. You can escape hell. I said, you can escape hell. If you will repent, and I will repent. So that's what David is talking about. It's interesting that that hay is there. But then he talks about the lost. He said, but the sons of Elio shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with, with hands. He said, they're going to be lost. He said, it's like you go out in the field, and you gather from the fields all these thorns, and these thorns are... They've crisscrossed and they're just all, you know, twisted together and the thorns are sticking out in every direction. And if you were to reach down and try to take a hold of them and, and remove them without some kind of protection, some kind of armor on your hands, it would pierce your hands. And, and, and David is saying that's the way the wicked are, the sons of Belial, the rebellious ones. He said they're like thorns. You try to, try to handle them, but you can't handle them. Because as soon as you try to handle the situation or you try to handle the rebellious ones, the sons of Belial, you're always going to get pierced by those thorns. Amen. But he goes on and says those people must be handled. Those thorns, those briars at some point are going to have to be removed from the kingdom of God. They're not going to be in the kingdom of God. They're going to have to be removed at some point from the kingdom of God. And so he says what will happen. But the men that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear. They shall utterly be burned with fire 
in the same place. See, you got to be well protected when you deal with the sons of Belial because they will pierce you. They're like thorns. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're going to need something in your life. Uh, it, you must be fenced with iron and with a staff of a spear because they're, and they're early going to be burned. He said they're going to be gathered and they're going to be dealt with in the future. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And then it's very, very interesting because now he talks about his, if you will, elite force. If you follow it progressively because it's a picture of the last days, now we're looking into the time beyond the judgment. We've got the salvation of God's people. We've got the judgment upon the briars. Amen. They've been removed out of the kingdom of God. The next thing will be the opening of the books in heaven. And for the righteous that will stand in the presence of God. He said this is what it's going to be like. There's going to be people that are going to be in. These are mighty men of valor. And what they've accomplished in God. And in the, by the spirit of God. And serving God. Someday when those books are opened up. People begin to see what's been done for the king. And so on that day, brothers and sisters, when those books are opened up and the wicked have been judged, the rebellious have been removed out of the way and, and God's people have been saved and made it through that narrow window, through the hay, if you will. What is it going to be on that day? What's it going to be like? Well, the Bible gives us a glimpse of it here about people who did some things for their king. And I'm talking about King David. But in your case and in my case, it's King Jesus. Hallelujah. These mighty men of valor, if you will, praise God. Praise God. You know, and, and they had to fight some battles. I said they had to fight some battles. Amen. And I'm going to preach this to you to encourage you tonight. Amen. I'm going to show you that living for God at times is very challenging. But there's coming a time where you're going to be rewarded. Amen. What will you do for your king? Are you still fighting the good fight of faith tonight? Sometimes you have to overcome. Sometimes you've got to fight. That's a part of being a Christian. You can't just come and sit in a church and, 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 and not be involved in the kingdom of God. He's calling you to be involved in this battle, praise God. And it's a battle. Look at your neighbor and ask them, what will you do for your king? So we see these books are opened up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like they will be in the, in the last days. And people's accomplishments in the kingdom of God will be seen. Hallelujah. And this is to encourage us in our battle today. Say amen. amen. God is good. Well, when they went to fight, what do you think it was like? Do you think they outnumbered the enemy or do you think the enemy outnumbered them? Do you think they were exhausted at times or do you think they were always rested up and ready to go? Do you think that they were weary in mind, weary in body, weary in soul at times? But yet they still said, I'll fight. And so brothers and sisters, I stand before you to encourage you today. And what Jeremiah was saying, he said, I can't find my peace. He said, oh, my bowels, my bowels, my heart is moved within me. He said, I can't find peace. And the reason I can't find peace is because I hear the sound of a trumpet calling us to war. Say praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Where are you going to find peace? You're going to find peace fighting the good fight of faith. But there's going to be times when you're going to be weary in your mind and weary in your soul, weary in your heart, weary in your body. And sometimes you're not going to find peace because it's a war. Amen. Amen. My father-in-law today walked in my office as I was sitting in my office. And he said this to me. He said, I don't know if you know about... <clears throat> The symbol of Mexico City or Mexico. Uh, Mexico City is the capital of Mexico. He said, I don't know if you know this or not, but he said uh, the emblem or the symbol of Mexico City 
the capital city of Mexico, he said, is an eagle with a serpent in its mouth. And that eagle's got his talents wrapped around that rattlesnake. And he said, what that is, he said, will you see that eagle, the symbol of the capital city? He said, what that means, there were a group of people called the Aztecs. And the Aztecs made their way over into the, to Mexico. And as they traveled, what my father-in-law said was they were looking for peace. Amen. And as they traveled, he said uh, that they saw an eagle with a serpent in its mouth and in its claws. Amen. Setting up in a uh, cactus. Right. Amen. Out there on the water, you know. There it was, I believe it was a prickly pear cactus and this mighty eagle had its, a serpent in its mouth and, and its talons around it, wrapped around it and there it sat on that water and the Aztec said, this is what my father-in-law, this way he interpreted it. What is that a picture of? If you study it, you'll find that to the Mexican people, hallelujah, of Mexico, they say that means it's good overcoming evil. That that, that, that eagle is a symbol of, of what is good, praise God. And I know by the word of God is a symbol of God. The eagle is a symbol, symbol of God. And it's a symbol of the people of God. And by the word of God, that serpent that is in the mouth of that eagle, in the talons of that eagle, is a symbol of evil. And it's a symbol of sin. It's a, it's a symbol of what happened in the fall. And missionaries, when they went to Mexico, they saw that symbol of that mighty eagle with a serpent in its mouth and its talons. And they said, that's good overcoming evil. And they used that symbolism to evangelize the Mexican people. Hallelujah. My father-in-law said it. He interpreted it this way. He said, as the Aztec people made their way, they were looking for peace. And they, they made their way. And when they saw that mighty eagle with that snake in its mouth, hallelujah, praise God, sitting in that cas ca a cactus there in the water, he said they began to fill in that water with all kinds of stones. And they literally built cities in the waters, praise the Lord, church. Amen. And, and what he was saying to me was this. He said, that's where you're going to find peace. And I didn't know the story. I didn't know the symbolism, so I had to go and look it up. But what he was saying to me in parabolic form, my father-in-law, was this. Jerry, if you're going to find peace, you're going to find it by conquering evil. If you're going to find peace, you're going to have to be like an eagle with a serpent in your mouth and talons wrapped up around that snake. That's where you're going to find peace. Yes, it's a fight. Yes, it's a battle. But that's where you can build. That's where you can grow. Hallelujah. It's fighting the good fight of faith and taking a serpent in your mouth and conquering that serpent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. And that was Jeremiah. He said, I hear the sound of a trumpet of war. My bells, my bells, my heart is moved within me. He said, my heart's making noise inside of me. I can't find any peace because there's a sound of war. The trumpet of war is sounding. And so I, he said, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to war the good fight of faith. And ultimately, brothers and sisters, Jeremiah knew that's the place you're going to find peace. You're not going to find peace throwing in the towel. You're not going to find peace quitting. You're not going to find peace sitting in a church pew somewhere. You're going to find peace like that mighty eagle with a serpent in its mouth and in its talents sitting up there. Good overcoming evil, praise God. That's where we're going to find peace. And so my father, in parabolic form, you know, I said, well, I'm going to look it up and I'm going to study it, brothers and sisters. But I'm saying to you, like Jeremiah said, for me to have true peace, I'm going to have to fight the good fight of faith. <clears throat> and at times, I don't have peace. At times, I'm hurting on the inside. At Come on, give God praise in the house. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your name and say, what will you do for your king? <clears throat> the Bible tells us as these books are opened up, 
the records of David's mighty men. If you will, elite forces, elite forces, brothers and sisters. I want to say this to you so you'll understand where I'm coming from tonight. That each one of you, each one of us individually are responsible for our own personal victory. Because when I have personal victory and when you have personal victory, you are affecting China. You are affecting the foreign fields of China. You are affecting the foreign fields of Zambia. You are affecting churches all over the world. And you say, how is that possible? Because when you're strong in the Lord, come on, give God praise in the house. And you have the victory. And you've got a profession. And you're an overcomer. You're making the church as a whole strong in God. And God is calling every one of us to be warriors. He's calling every one of us to have personal victories, to overcome, to get the victory, to fight the fight of faith. Anybody can, you know, quit, give up. But no, God says, when you do that, you're affecting not just yourself. You're affecting the church in Odessa, Texas. You're affecting the church in China. You're affecting the church in Zambia. Everybody needs to have their own personal victory. you got to be an eagle with a, with a serpent in your mouth. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. And so we have examples here of mighty men of valor. Hallelujah. And as I go through them, you're going to see they were overwhelmed by the odds. I'm going to say it again. They were overwhelmed by the odds. It wasn't in their favor. The odds were against them. You're going to see not over were they overwhelmed by the odds, but they were overwhelmed by exhaustion. At times weary in their minds. At times overwhelmed in their lives. At times not having peace. But they didn't let it stop them. Because they said I want to serve the king. I'm going to do something for the king. Hallelujah to the lamb. Anybody can fight. If you're not going through anything. Anybody can fight. Hallelujah. If the odds are in your favor. Anybody can fight and keep on going if you've got it on your side. But what if the odds are against you? What if you're exhausted? What if you're weary in mind? What if you're weary in soul? What if you can't find peace? What are you going to do then? That's the test. Hallelujah. That's right. And so we see it illustrated for us in the Word of God. Dave begins to talk about these mighty men of valor, elite forces, if you will, in his kingdom that would do things for their king. I said, praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometime you're going to have to stand by yourself. Your family won't stand with you. Your friends won't stand with you. You got to stand by yourself and you got to keep on fighting no matter what. And so David, he begins to record these mighty men of valor, elite forces, if you will, Hallelujah. And really, they're, they're separated into three categories. We've got three. They were the first rank, if you will. Uh, they were the ones that accomplished the most. They were the highest of the elite. Three of them are called by name. And then we go down a little further from that. And you got a couple of other men that are mentioned. That, and they're also elite of the elite. And then after you get beyond that, you get the third section. And you've got about 30 to 32 different men that were, were David's mighty men of valor. Say praise God. Praise Hallelujah God. to the Lamb. <clears throat> Give God praise if you will. Hallelujah. And so the Bible tells us we begin looking at as the books are open. See, David wanted you to get this because this is an end time message. He says this, he said, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had. His name here, uh, Tachmanite, uh, Tachmanite, that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adeno the Esnite. He lifted up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Now you can go over into the Chronicles section and you can study that. The Chronicles section, I believe, says 300. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to go by the text tonight and read it to you. Amen. 
This man overwhelmed by odds. I mean, what would you do if you looked up and you saw 800 people that were against you? You know what he did? Even though he was overwhelmed by the odds. The Bible said he killed 800 of them. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. That's amazing, isn't it? 800 whom he slew at one time. Now, I don't believe that means he got one spear and he shoved that spear through 800 of them. What it means, he, oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. He speared one. He went to another. He went to another. He went to another. He went to another until 800 Philistines were laying there dead. And how, how, how did he do it? The Bible tells us how he did it in the word of God. It was by the power of the Lord God. It was God that wrought the great victory in verse 10. God anointed him. That's the only way he possibly could. So sometimes the odds are against you, but you've got to get a mentality of a warrior. You've got to get a heart of a warrior. Hallelujah. Even though it's all stacked against you, you say, give me the spear of God's word and I'm going to take the enemy down. He was right there at the top, rank number one. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you want to be a mighty person of valor, that means you're going to have to fight some fights. You're going to have to overcome some things and you're you're going to be overwhelmed at times, but by God's power, you can get the victory. Amen. After him, number two, the number two one in the rank, a man by the name of Eleazar, the son of Dodo. And really, it's probably Doda. But anyway, Dodo, what a name, right? I mean, if you had that name, you'd probably wake up and say, well, uh, my name's Eleazar, the son of Dodo, uh, the Ahoahite. You know, I don't know if you'd want to be called the son of Dodo, the Ahoahite. But he didn't care, hallelujah, what his name was. Didn't care what his title was. He said, I'm going I'm to do something in the kingdom of God because I want to do something for my king. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so the Bible said, number two man. Praise the Lord. Are you with me tonight? He's one of the three mighty men with David. Say, with David. With David. Uh, who's on the Lord's side tonight? Hallelujah. I'm not asking you to be on my side, but are you on Jesus' side tonight? Hallelujah. Number two of the top three. Mighty men with David. Amen. When they defiled, defied the Philistines, where they were there gathered together to battle and the men of Israel were gone. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, Amen. overwhelmed with exhaustion. Amen. But yet he kept fighting. Amen. His hand clave unto the sword. The Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to the spoil. Did you know what it says? It says that Israel, many of them went away. They didn't fight, they quit. Did you catch that? They quit. Why did they quit? Because they didn't, didn't believe or think that what was needed to be defended was worthy to be defended. And so they just quit and they just went away. And my brother said, we could come to church tonight and not be here. But I'm preaching, I believe there's some soldiers in this house. There might be one, there might be two, there might be three. And God is showing you, if you get a heart to do something for your king, one can kill 800, two can do this, three can do this. And so we see it here. The Bible says what he did. Praise God by the power of God. Whenever Israel was leaving and going away, some of them quit. Yes, yes they did. Didn't feel like it was worthy to be defended. But this man says, I'll defend it. I'll defend it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They don't believe it's worthy to be defended, but I'll defend it. And so he took it on. He got that sword in his hand. He clave unto the sword. The Bible says, hallelujah. He couldn't even open his hand, brothers and sisters. 
He had fought so hard and so long. He was totally exhausted. When they got ready to try to take the sword out of his hand, they had to open his hand because his hand was conformed to the weapon that he had. That's a soldier. That's a mighty man of valor. I'm preaching to the women, by the way, as well. Praise the Lord. These top three, he talks about them all the way to verse 17. They're the accomplishments that they did as mighty people of God. Amen, amen. It, the Jewish scholars say these were known as the greatest warriors in Israel, the most celebrated warriors in Israel at the time. Overwhelmed by numbers, but didn't quit. Overwhelmed by exhaustion, but didn't quit. I'm just trying to encourage you tonight. Sometimes the odds will be against you. But if you've got the heart that wants to do something for your king, you'll say, yeah, the odds are against me, but I'm going to still fight. You might say, I'm exhausted, so I'm going to take a break. No, don't have time to take a break. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And so he fought till the sword clay, his hand clave to the sword. Amen. Amen. Number three. And after him was a Shema, the son of Agi, the Hurite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a place of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. Amen. And slew the Philistines. The Lord wrought a great victory. As another man said, I'll defend this territory. Give God praise in the house. You look at it as just a ground that's got lentils in it. He said, but I'll defend this. Now I want you to see. Not over were they overwhelmed by odds at times and overwhelmed by exhaustion, but sometimes they were in the midst of confusion. Israel was confused at times. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? But there were warriors that stood up in the midst of confusion, in the midst of where Israel was confused and said, I'll take it on. I'll fight the fight in the midst of confusion because I believe God can still work in the midst of confusion. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible said, the Lord wrought a great victory. And then verse 13, three of the 30 chief went down and came to David in the harvest time under the cave of Adullam and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Raphim. And David was then in the hold and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem, right? David longed and said, oh, that one would give me drink of the waters of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. That's all he had to say. The king just said, this is what I want. And those three mighty men of valor that I just preached to you about, they said, we're going to take it on. They busted through the garrison line. They busted through the Philistines. They went straight to the waters of Bethlehem. Those five wells that were there, and they got water from Bethlehem, and they brought it back to David. Amen. Jewish scholarship says it took place during the time of the Feast of Tabernacles that they accomplished this. Look at your neighbor and ask him, what will you do for your king? What's he asking you to do tonight? Are you overwhelmed by odds? Are you overwhelmed by exhaustion? Are you overwhelmed by confusion? Are you dealing with a situation that nobody really wants you to defend? How, give God praise in the house. Or you got the king saying to you, I want, I'm thirsty, but you can give me water. The Lord is saying, I'm thirsty, but there's somebody in the church tonight that can give me something to drink. Somebody that will praise me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Bible said they busted through the garrison of the Philistines. Three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines, drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. He said the sacrifice that they paid is too great. I can't, I wanted it. They did it for their king. 
But the sacrifice that they made to get to water, he said, it's too sacred. It belongs to God himself. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters. Some of you had to bust through Philistine territory. Hallelujah, to serve God, to worship God. Hallelujah, to do something for your king. And God looks at it as a sacred thing. It's a sacred thing, hallelujah. So David poured it out as a libation before God Almighty, recognizing the price that was paid. What price will you pay? What price will I pay? I want you to notice, brothers and sisters, it doesn't seem like much is in their favor. It's all against them. But with God, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord God Almighty. If God is on your side, it doesn't mean if add 800 against you, if God is on your side. Give God praise in the house. You got a garrison standing between you and the desire of your king. What will you do for your king? Be encouraged, brothers and sisters. And so he says in verse 17, he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this blood, the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? They paid a price. Amen. Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. Look at the record that they have. Someday the books are going to be opened. And you might stand there and you say, oh, I was too tired or, uh, you know, I was confused or uh, the odds were against me. I was weary in mind, weary in body, weary in soul. But God said, I've got somebody that would show you an example of what they would do for their king. God puts value on that, brothers and sisters. When you're going through something in your life, but you just don't quit. He said, you don't quit. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible continues and tells us here about a couple of other people. Verse 18, his name was Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruah, was chief among the three. Now it seems like that originally he was not a part of that elite force of the three. But by what he did, his act of valor, he got promoted over these three. It may be that he was also just a part of the 32 and he was promoted over them. We're not totally sure. But because of his act of valor, he got a promotion from the king. Hallelujah. And so Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruah, I come against that spirit in the name of Jesus. You know what spirit you are. He lifted up his spear against 300 and slew them. And the name of my, and he was name had had the name among three. Was he not most honorable of the three? Therefore, he was their captain. David said, "What you just did is so awesome. It's so full of valor." He said, "I'm going to take you and I'm going to put you over the three. You weren't originally a part of the three, but what you just did deserves recognition. Hallelujah for what you did for your king. Hallelujah. God, God." will not forget your labor of love. Amen. The Bible tells us we keep going. How be it he attained not unto the first three. See, but, but he, because of what he did, he was put over them. Wow. Praise the Lord, church. The Lord. Now we see a man by the name of Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts And now we see this man, number two man, in the second group. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. You know, there's some people, they won't play second fiddle to nobody. They want to be number one. If they're not number one, they're not. Hallelujah. If they're not number one, they don't get all the recognition, they're not going to serve at all. They want to be number one, brothers and sisters. But I thank God for group number two. Group number two said, I don't have to be in the first group, but I can still do something for my king. You might call me second fiddle, but I can do something for my king. Well, what did he do? He slew two lion-like men of Moab. 
He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of the pit in the time of snow. Did you catch it? He did this. And then the Bible said he did this. And then he said he did this. You know what the Bible's saying is keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. What will you do for your king? When you defeat two lion like men and then you go in a pit a snowy day and you kill a lion in the pit. You keep going. There's still more to do. Praise God. Thank God for people that won't quit. Amen. After he slew the lion in the midst of the pit in the time of snow, you know, you know who the lion is, right? Spiritually speaking, it's the it's this it's Satan. That's right. First Peter 5 and 8, the Bible talks about him as a roaring lion. There he is. What brought him out to maybe the forest and found him in this pit was the snow. But there he was in this snowy pit. And snow in the Word of God, if you look in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, when God appeared to Moses, he said, put your hand in your cloak. And he pulled it out and it was leprous. And he said, put it back in. He put it back in. The leprosy was gone. Leprosy is a type of sin. And so we see a man of valor here that goes in and defeats uh, that roaring lion in the pit of snow. Are you with me? He's conquering some things in his life. Give God praise. How is he doing it? It's by the power of the living God. Say, so keep going. And then the next thing, he slew an Egyptian. See, one right after another. We got an example. He slew an Egyptian, a goodly man. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. You know what he did? All this man had was a staff in his hand. That Egyptian, now when he says he's a goodly man, that means he was skilled. Okay, okay. <laughs> that means he was a man of war. Yeah. And you know what this guy did? Amen, amen. He took it away from him. <laughs> wow. Hallelujah, amen. All he had was a staff. He took the spear away and pa. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. I mean, there's some people when the enemy's waving a weapon out in front of them, whoo. No, take it out of his hand. Hallelujah. Use it against him. Hallelujah. What the enemy's trying to use to defeat you, take it out of his hands and use it against him. Hallelujah. Somebody, I feel like the Holy Ghost tonight because the enemy has planned plans against some of you in this church. He's planned plans against this man as well. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to take that weapon out of his hands and we're going to use it against him. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! The devil don't stand a chance. The enemy don't stand a chance. And that don't mean I'm going to kill you. Right, Pastor. Right, right, right. And that don't mean I'm going to kill you. Right, right, Pastor. We're in a spiritual battle. Yes, amen. So we're going to take that weapon that he was going to use yes. to try to destroy. Yes. And we're going to use it on him. Give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I said I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. What will you do for your king? The Bible goes on and it tells us about this man. Whew, praise the Lord. These things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada and had the name among three mighty men. Amen. What does that mean? Well, God put him by, or David, the king put him over. He became the chief of the bodyguards. The Bible said he was more honorable than the thirty. But he attained not to the first three. Amen. David set him over his what? Lord. His guard. <clears throat> Say praise God, brothers and sisters. Now you and I can take this approach in our walk with God. We can give up. You know, or we can keep fighting. Amen. Against all odds, you name it, we've already covered it tonight. Don't know what you're going through, but are you still fighting? That's the key. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Would you praise worship God. the Lord tonight? Give God the glory. Give God the honor because it's by God that these things happen. Are you powerful, Jesus? Hallelujah, my Lord. This came in my spirit in the last few days. Yes, Lord. Better to die with honor. That's right. 
than to live with shame. That's right. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said better to die with honor than to live with shame. It wasn't quoted, but they did a, an interview. And I'm not saying that I'm pro this person or not. But I listened to the interview with a Kennedy. And a Kennedy is, is fixing to get into the race for the presidency. I understand. He announced that he wanted to be a candidate for the presidency. And the question was asked by the reporter. Aren't you a little bit afraid since your uncle, uh, John F. Kennedy, was killed? And you're, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so on and so forth. Family members have been killed connected to politics. Right, Pastor. Right. And his response was this. He said, I, I'd rather die and, and the Constitution remain in place. I'd rather die and America remain what it's supposed to be than to have peace. Come on, somebody. And the Constitution is not honored in America. You see what he's saying? I'd rather die right. with honor That's right. than to live yes. with shame. Yes. What will you do for your king? And so we go down through here and we see that they begin to list 30 or 30. You know, literally if you count them, you got to think 32 or so here recorded. People that were of the mighty men, the mighty people of God, and the mighty people of David that would do great things for their king. And if you take time, if you look at 1 Chronicles 27, 1 through 15, there was a total of 12 of these 30 that David took and made them the commanders of his 12 army, army companies. Commanders over 12 army, army companies. And they rotated. You know, if there's 12 months in the year, they rotated every month. And this leader over this company, he would come forth with his army. And then the next one would step up and come up with his army. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, it's amazing to see what God says in his word to encourage you. There are times when peace seems to be fleeting. But don't quit. Don't, don't give up. Times when it's overwhelming. The odds, you're tired, you're exhausted. So many things. But God is saying to you tonight, what will you do for your king? And when you fight, when it's the hardest, that's when you get God's attention. Because you know what? It would be really easy for some of us right now right. to ride off in the sunset. Right. Right. It would be extremely easy for us to do that. But you know what? We have chosen to stand and fight the good fight of faith. We, we've, we've decided to take up a cross and follow Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so I pray this has been an encouragement to you. The final words of David. End time picture. Someday we're all going to stand before God. That's right, Pastor. And those books are going to be opened. And I pray to God that each one of you are rewarded tremendously for what you've done in the kingdom of God. God has recorded everything, everything that's done. And someday you'll be recognized as the mighty men of valor. And you'll be recognized as people, as people that were willing to do something for their yes. king. Let's stand and let's give God praise in the house. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. Let your church be encouraged, oh God. Continue to raise up, Lord, from the midst of this church. People that are willing to do something for their king. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Is there somebody that would bust through a garrison of Philistines tonight? Hallelujah! To do something Amen. for their king. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The waters of Bethlehem, the waters of salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ has provided for us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, by your mercy and grace today that your word has gone forth. We declare that the enemy is defeated. We declare that he's defeated. In this house. He's defeated. Lord. Spiritual. Yes, Lord. Powers. Spiritual powers, Lord. Is there somebody tonight by prayer you can defeat a spiritual power in Amen. this house? Amen. By prayer. Amen. Somebody that loves God. Amen. Say amen, church. Amen.
Amen, Lord. Not by power, nor by might, but by your spirit, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God, the enemy is under our feet, mighty God. We take authority over the enemy, Brother, oh God. Brother Tim, they get the mic and close us in prayer, please. Hallelujah. Lord, you're in this house tonight, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Not by power, nor by might, but by your spirit, Lord Jesus. We take authority over the enemy. We declare by your blood and by your power, the enemy is under our feet. We will leap over a wall by our God. By our God, we will run through a troop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With our weariness. Hallelujah. With our heaviness, oh God. We will run through a troop by your name, oh God. We will hold up the bloodstained banner, Lord Jesus, for to honor you, Lord God. In the mighty name, Lord Jesus. Not by power, nor by might, but by your spirit. Say it the Lord, your train will fill the temple. Your train will fill the temple. Your train will fill this earth. Your train will. Hallelujah. We will conquer by your name. We will conquer by your blood. You said, Lord Jesus, all power and all authority is given to you in heaven and in earth. We will go forth. To all nations, teaching them to observe everything in your word, Lord Jesus. In your name, mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, church. Shout out to your Lord with a voice of triumph. He's already riding the victory. We just go get it. Hallelujah. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Sin is defeated in your name. Hallelujah. 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 Look, warmness is defeated in your name. Hallelujah. There is no defeat in your kingdom, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Our eyes are flame of fire. Your feet, hallelujah, breasts, oh God. Lord Jesus, your hair like wool. You are our king, hallelujah. You are, unde you are undefeated in battle, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We cannot be defeated if we follow you. But by your power, we will rot victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, church, hallelujah, amen, amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are our peace, O oh God. You are our peace in the midst of battle. Father God, we thank you for your word tonight, Lord. We give you all praise and all glory and all honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. God, I pray over this church tonight that each believer, each saint of God would recognize the importance of having personal victory that each one of us, God, tonight would have personal victory in our lives. Let us recognize that that is literally influencing the church around the world. Because we are a part of the church of the living God. So I thank you, God, for this church, for your people. Thank you for strengthening our hands in the battle. Thank you for showing us, Lord, by the word that at times, the odds are against us. At times, exhaustion. 
has taken hold of us. At times, confusion. At times, Lord, we just need to trust in You, to take the spear out of the enemy's hand and defeat the enemy with it. And we thank You, Lord, for Your great power and strength today. I stand in this house tonight, Lord, and I pray this prayer. Let Your will be done. The will of God would be done. We thank You for what You're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank You, God, for the rest, the peace, the refreshing, the ongoing increase of light as we live for You, God. David can say all of those things having fought many, many battles. And as he was fixing to go into eternity, God, his final words spoken to us, the church in the last days, to show us what the battle's going to be like. Jeremiah the prophet says, I can't find peace because I hear the sound of a trumpet of war. And so God, today we know we find peace in fighting the good fight of faith. We find peace with a serpent in our, in our mouth. In the name of Jesus. And upon that will we build. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Lift your hands one more time and give God all praise and all glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Reach out, reach out to your brother or your sister and pray for them right now. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We wish we bless your name. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory, 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 glory. <coughs> we already have the victory in you, Lord God. There's the walk in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. A light unto his path, Lord God. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Beautiful God, beautiful God, beautiful God. Beautiful God, beautiful God, beautiful God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. There's a, there's a breakthrough right now. 
I, you can, I can feel it in my spirit. And, and you're doing it. It's not the preacher, but you're doing it. It's not the preacher, but it's the saints of God tonight. God, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I, uh, you see that? that? That shows you right there. I, what God can do with you in the church, you, you just change the whole atmosphere. Amen. Enemies have been defeated. And feel, and, and it wasn't the preacher in the pulpit. I just preached the word. You responded, but God Hallelujah. used you. I mean, I felt it. Boom! Hallelujah. Just praise God. He's amazing. You know, though those uh, mighty men of valor weren't always mighty men of valor. That's you know right. that, right? That's right, Pastor. They were misfits. That's right. That joined David when David wasn't king. That's right. They were in distress. Yes, sir. They were in debt. Yes, sir. Praise you know? Yeah. And they showed up when David was on the run Praise for his life Hallelujah. and joined up with David. Thank and the misfits and yes, distressed and people in debt. Yes, sir. By God's grace and mercy, turned, they turned them. Amen. They turned into mighty people of valor. Hallelujah. Amen. God gets the glory. Amen. Amen. But you think about those misfits that followed David in the time when he wasn't popular. Amen. We started with the text of Scripture right. in a time when he was hated. That's right. And how David handled that. He didn't get angry. That's right. Amen. Amen. He had discretion. That's right. And when the enemy died, he lamented. He lamented. Yeah. What a great example to us. Amen. Hallelujah. But in those days when he was being chased like a partridge, right. hated, that's when those misfits joined with David. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise when was it? It was before he was reigning. Yeah, amen. There's coming a time when Jesus is going to come back. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. That's right, Pastor. And you're going to reign with him. Amen. Hallelujah. But before you reign with him, you've got to join him. Yes. 
now. Say praise God. You got to join him now. And he'll take you and he'll turn you into a weapon. Yes. He'll turn you into something amazing. Praise God. Amen. For his glory. For his glory. Lord Jesus, we just pray for the church tonight. Pray for your people. Thank you for what we feel here tonight, God. Just, just a liberty in this place, in this house. And that you would be honored and be glorified in, in your people. Lord, thank you tonight for their prayer, for their worship, for their hunger for you. Personally, I feel in my spirit, they touched, they touched your throne. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And because of that, Lord, that ministered to me. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you for your people tonight, your church. Be magnified, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. We might look at ourselves and we not maybe think we're worth much. That's right. But God can turn it. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Turn us into. Yes, Vessels of honor. Amen. So may the Lord bless you. I pray and keep you. Amen. Make his face shine upon you and give you his peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Go forth. Yes, sir. Next few days. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Trusting God. Yes, Lord. Say, Lord, you can use me. Lord, you can use me. Yeah, amen. If you can use them, you can use me. And so, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of God. You're dismissed in Jesus' awesome name.